So last year, I made a video about how I went from help desk or technical support role to a cloud engineering role. And I shared kind of the map of my career so far. And this will act as a second part where I'm going to share how I went from being a cloud engineer to being a DevOps or platform engineer. Now, for a bit of context, I don't have a computer science degree, but I do have a two-year computer networking and technical support diploma. And I shared part of that journey from how I went from the diploma to the technical support role to the cloud ops role in the previous video. So seeing that interest, I was like, maybe I should continue the series with how I went from cloud engineer to DevOps engineer. And the idea with this video is going to be very similar to the previous one where I just sit down, talk about all the thoughts that come to my mind about being in these roles and what was kind of my thought process. So it's going to be very unstructured, candid kind of video, and I hope that helps. So let's get started. So as you can see on the screen, what I have here is all the different roles that I've had over the years. And I have already covered this section of my career in the previous video. So I'll ask you if you want to learn more about that, you can check that video out. But today I'm going to specifically talk about how did I go from cloud ops engineer to DevOps engineer. So I did spend two years in the cloud ops engineer role from 2019 to 2021. And then 2021, I was asked to join the DevOps team or the platform engineering team. Now, if you look at the document so far, as I said, we have already covered them until Cloud Ops Engineer. But what I want to point out is that in that Cloud Ops Engineer role, I was just supporting, I was supporting the SaaS, which was hosted on AWS. So majority of our infrastructure was AWS. And then there was some bits of it that were on-prem. And during this time as Cloud Engineer, we did get acquired. So an enterprise company acquired our SaaS. So we went from 38 people company to being a 2,500 people enterprise company. But mind you, I was still supporting the AWS infrastructure for this specific SaaS. Now this key information is important because this is what led to the new DevOps engineer team, right? So they were forming a new team after few acquisitions that this enterprise made and I was asked to join that DevOps engineer team later on. For the skills, I think what led to this transition is, first of all, it was the AWS knowledge and supporting the SaaS, but mainly I would say it was the observability and monitoring advancements that I made for the AWS infrastructure and also a lot of the automation that I did, whether it's through cloud formation as infrastructure as code tool or helping with CI CD to reduce that release time, which was around like 65%. The impact of the work that I did helped the business, which I think was more towards the automation, CI CD, infrastructure as code side of things, you know, which are the role and responsibility of a DevOps engineer. So I think that's what led to this transition. But mind you, I focused very heavily on business impact. So like how either I can reduce cloud costs or how I can help save my team's time. So earlier when we did a release, it would take us a weekend to do a new release of the SaaS. And I mean four to six hours on weekends. I reduced that time by 65%. Majority of the effort was from the team, but there were a few bits and pieces that I heavily worked on, which led to doing a release in a couple of hours on a Saturday instead of the entire weekend. So when you make that kind of business impact in a small company, you know, you have visibility from leadership. So like the CTO was aware and also on the sales side and the business side of people were aware that, hey, like now we can do releases way more faster. So always think about what business impact or value you can bring with your technical skills in general. I think it'll help you transition 
and growing your career at a different level and skill and scale. I also want to share this post that I made. So on LinkedIn a few weeks ago, I made a post that right after my transition from tech support to cloud engineer, of course, same company, I dove headfirst into solving and improving some architecture issues. I started working towards making our infrastructure more reliable with better auto scaling and fault tolerance because, you know, I was one of the engineers who was going to be on call. So I had to make sure that we have reliable infrastructure. Then I focused on automation, specifically IAC and CICD pipelines. This led to around 60% reduction in time it took us to do a new release. This ultimately let me join the platform team a year later after an acquisition. And I also worked on making better architecture decisions with cost savings in mind, helping us reduce the AWS costs around 10 to 15 person. So of course, when I was a cloud engineer, all of this took time, you know, because it was my first role. I was hired at an associate level. So there was a lot of reading of white papers from AWS, a lot of discussions with solutions architects from AWS. And it took me time to implement all of this. But the impact that I made led me to get promoted after 11 months to be promoted from an associate cloud engineer to cloud engineer within 11 months. Stop with just learning tools and see how your technical skills can make that business impact and generate value. Now, coming back to the cloud ops context that I gave you, like the things that I worked on during this role, what might have led to the transition and me being asked to join the DevOps team, I obviously said yes. I'm like, yes, I'll join the DevOps team, you know, where I can dedicate my time on things like IAC, infrastructure as code, and automation of a lot of the deployment. And also now, if you look at the DevOps engineer role, I was also responsible for Azure and GCP infrastructures and not just AWS because this is now an enterprise company and they had multiple services being deployed in different cloud providers. They also had a lot of products. ECI, which is the company now, had made a couple of acquisitions during that time. So those acquisitions meant they will have cloud environments in different cloud providers. So this team was going to be responsible in maintaining those cloud environments. So how my role changed now is that I was going to be responsible for entire enterprise. Uh, I was still on call for supporting previous SaaS infrastructure, automated a lot of infrastructure deployment and observability and monitoring across products. So this was not just tied to the SaaS I was supporting, but instead a wider scope of observability and monitoring. Some of the challenges that I want to mention here are the new tools. So I had to learn Terraform. Again, this was towards that cloud agnostic nature. So we needed an IAC tool that supported multiple cloud providers. So Terraform was a great choice, but as I was an expert in cloud formation, so I had to learn Terraform now and how Terraform worked. So that was kind of like a new challenge, which I was really looking forward to. And we used Terraform for IAC standardization across different cloud providers. And one of the other tools that I really honed and like learned very deeply was Azure DevOps, because that was, that is what was going to be used by this new team for a lot of the automation and releases through CI CD pipelines and infrastructure deployment but also focusing a lot on security as well. You know, whether it's implementing code scanning tools like SonarCube or baking security controls within the CI CD pipeline themselves. Towards the end of my cloud engineer role, so like late 2020, early 2021, I was also reading the Phoenix project. And this really helped me with shaping my thoughts around how you can make that kind of business impact and generate value 
with your technical skills and how just the teams work. So a lot of insights into DevOps and the platform engineering team, how they should operate and how they work in a team, in a company dynamics. So I highly recommend this book if you are new to cloud engineering or DevOps, or if you're trying to get into cloud engineering or DevOps. Another challenge was opinionated thinking. I specifically remember we needed to use a Git workflow. So like how our repositories are gonna be maintained across different engineers. And I wrote the entire workflow for Git for us, but that comes from having experience and having opinions like You'll have an opinion if you have tried multiple strategies and things, right? Not only having like an opinion mattered, but also being able to explain why we are going this route instead of another route that other engineers might prefer. So like having that thought leadership was a challenge here for me. And of course, I spent a lot of time reading other people's work, reading a lot of blog posts, and also talking to other engineers on their viewpoint to finally make a decision and also making strategic decisions. So this was a challenge. I think I was kind of feeling like an imposter at that time. It was like, oh, how can I make these big decisions? Now, as soon as I started that role, some things that I think I did well were lead AWS IC efforts. So which accounted for 80% of contribution of the Terraform modules. So the AWS part of all of this standardization through IEC. So every bit of infrastructure was deployed through Terraform. 80% of those modules I contributed towards. Standardization of test environment deployments for QAs and devs. So this meant that QA engineers and devs would do some testing and they would have to spin up their own test environments because our SaaS was being supported in different operating systems. So you can run it on Linux, you can run it on Mac OS or Windows. They would do this testing on their own, which would take a lot of time. But to standardize that, we asked them to leverage cloud. To make it easy, we standardized the process of creating a new environment in cloud by all of the automation that I did. Third being monitoring and observability. So the coverage went up, we were observing and monitoring 95% of the services, which led to better auto scaling decisions and ultimately reducing 15% of the cloud costs. And then also, and as in terms of certifications, AWS I was already familiar with. So I did a bunch of AWS certifications during my time as a cloud engineer, which was from 2019 to 2021. During my DevOps engineer days, I focused on Microsoft Azure because that was the new cloud provider that I was learning. Did Microsoft AZ900, the Azure Fundamentals, AZ104, which is the Azure Administrator, and some DevOps one, so like the Terraform certification. So now in terms of upskilling, you know, because I was already working in a cloud engineering role, I was able to apply some of the DevOps or platform engineering principles into that role. And now that I have shared a lot of context on, you know, how I was able to do it, I think these are the skills that really helped me. So I did create a guide called the DevOps.guide. And if you go check out the introduction, it kind of talks to you about what this guide is, what are some of the prerequisites. But also there is a video you can check out on how I became a DevOps engineer with no CS degree, which basically talks about all the skills needed, but I can kind of summarize that these were the things that I've really paid attention to during my time as a cloud engineer who transitioned to DevOps engineer. So version control system, continuous integration and deployment, as I already said, like CI CD pipelines were my jam, saving a lot of time, not only for my team, but also the wider engineering team through setting up a lot of these CI CD pipelines. Same thing with automation through infrastructure as code, and then also learning some kind of configuration management tool. So this could be, you know, things like Ansible, even Packer, 
and Chef. Then I focused a lot on containerization. I think it is important in today's time. Back in that role, we were kind of shifting towards containers. So, you know, use of Docker and Kubernetes, but a lot of the applications ran on Microsoft Framework 4.5. And at the time, that framework was not supported on Linux. That containerization wave was kind of coming to our company, but even if there were no practical applications, I still, you know, spent time learning Docker and some of Kubernetes. And lastly, as I mentioned, monitoring and observability, I think that helped a lot in showing. I think that was the other piece than automation that really helped me create impact and generate value at the team because a lot of the monitoring and observability led to, you know, less on-call incidents, better auto scaling and better infrastructure, spending less money on the cloud providers because we could kind of see how many resources are needed. So I think monitoring and observability are important. You can go check out this guide that I've created. There's also a capstone project that will help you build end-to-end -end project covering all of these topics. So version control, CICD, IIC, containerization and monitoring and observability. So in terms of skills, this is what I really focused on and also applied it in my cloud engineering role. Now, this is the journey that I went through from covering both context of like what I did in cloud ops role that led me to the DevOps and then what were kind of my responsibility during the DevOps engineer role. And this covers my kind of four years at this point of the journey. So four years I spent at one company starting as an intern to being a DevOps engineer until 2022, because that's when I went and joined the technical solutions team at GCP at Google, and I'm happy to cover that in the next video. So let me know in the comments if you would like that and how kind of I interviewed and landed that role. And then ultimately my current role, which is developer relations at Twilio. So that is kind of the entire journey so far. I hope this kind of helps you with your tech career journey or if you are trying to transition, whether it's from tech support to cloud engineer or if you're going for the DevOps engineer role, I know this was kind of a candid video, like I didn't have a script, I had just like some pointers, I just wanted to sit down and share my journey to help you with yours. I hope you like it, I'll see you in the next one, peace.